Hello everybody, Daniel Elohim, and today, as the uh, title suggests, I want to make a video about all the alien sightings that we've had, UFO sightings, um, the, I made a video about the uh, meteor that went over I don't even remember where the islands over there somewhere, Puerto Rico, I want to say maybe. And um, anyway, thank you for joining me in my workshop. I'm here with my little dog, Rosie, down here. I don't want to move the camera because it took me about five minutes to get it right where it's at. Uh, I meant my phone, not the camera. And so if you hear barking or something like that, it's what it is, who it is. So I want to start with what the Bible says. Um, about UFOs, okay? And uh, many people probably don't look at this as a UFO, but I'm going to show you something different here. But we'll start with the book of Ezekiel, and chapter 1, verse 1. And I'm going to skip some stuff, and I'll let you know which uh, verses I skip and why. The Vision of the Four Creatures is the title those aren't, if you go to the uh, Qumran scrolls, the Dead Sea scrolls, th the titles that you see above the chapters and stuff aren't there. These are what they were, th these were put in um, in the Council of Nicaea um, when they uh, canonized some of the books that they felt, when they canonized the books they wanted to be in this Bible. Now it came to pass in the third. Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river at Chibar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chibar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Now I'm going to use just, this is the King James I'm going to use Lord God. I'm just going to read it. Um, normally, I would say Yahuwah, Yeshua, um, Elohim for uh, Lord. Um, now, this is uh, still chapter 1, verse 4. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud. Okay, a great cloud, a whirlwind. And... A fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. So you have this big cloud with a fire in the middle, a light surrounding it. And out of the middle of the fire, the color of amber light, a light the color of amber. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. So the likeness of a man, um, a shadow, when I'm standing on the sidewalk, a shadow's cast, that's a likeness. A, a mannequin is the likeness of a man. What else is a like? Um, at night, a tree can look like a man. Just saying. Verse six, and every one had four faces and every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. You ever notice, uh, like in World War II, and even today, uh, the fighter pilots, especially in, in World War II, uh, Vietnam, they would paint pictures, you know, the Enola Gay, and they had a picture of a woman on there, um, painted on the front on the nose um, and their and their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot I'm gonna try and cut in some pictures here some images um, to, sh to so you have a reference now imagine um, a drone a large drone and it has four legs on it and 
instead of having uh or not only having just a four wings like a helicopter propeller to lift it up it also has rockets underneath it to give it more propulsion um, and that would be the color of they sparkled like the color of burnished brass or could have just been brass kind of metal and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides and they four had their faces and their wings their wings were joined one to another a helicopter has four four propellers on it and they're all joined one to another they turned not when they went they went everyone straight forward so these images on the side maybe of this craft it, it moved like a drone it went this way and that way and this way and each face each side of the, the craft had a face on it and it went this way like a drone back and forth it didn't turn like an airplane like a big circle or even a helicopter as for the likeness of their faces they forehead the face of a man the face of a lion and on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox. On the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. And they went every one straight forward. So he's just going back over their directions again here in chapter or verse 12. Um as for the likeness of the living creatures, 13, their appearance was, the li was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps and went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. So they moved pretty fast. Verse 15. Now as I beheld the living creatures, Behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures, with its four faces. So he's looking at the living creatures, and behold, one wheel upon the earth by them, by them with their four faces. So that's, this is a different vehicle now. This is something separate from the faces. So now it, it very well could have been four a creature with four faces. I mean, you look at God's creation and there's no limit to it. Um, who's to put a limit on what, what he creates, on what our Heavenly Father creates? The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the cover, color of burl. And they four had one likeness. They all looked the same. And their appearance was and their appearance and their work was it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. So they had moving parts, a wheel inside of a wheel. Now, the images I'm going to put up uh, either cut into the video here, which you'll be seeing, or at the end, um, I'll run a, a, a clip of them. Um, you'll see in ancient times, like, you know, 1600s, 1500s, when they were they would do these carvings um, and these these art, these drawings of of this and their perception. So they didn't have airplanes, helicopters. They didn't have the technology we had. And they sh what was their technology? A cart, um, you know, uh, a horse and cart. And that that's the wheel they knew. So that's how they drew these pictures and and these creations of art back then um, were just big wheels and inside another wheel um, now we have a gyroscope have you ever seen a gyroscope that's a wheel within a wheel and they're spinning separate directions and they have a perfect balance they, look them up they're pretty cool gyroscope um, let's see where, where are we ezekiel chapter 1 verse 17 when they went they went upon their four sides and they turned not as they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. So those could have been windows in a, 
this the wheels are definitely a craft this is not the living creatures otherwise he would have called them living creatures he doesn't call them living creatures so these could have been um, portals like windows on the sides of these giant discs they didn't have that you know they didn't have uh, that that kind of thinking like we do nowadays we put our thoughts and try to put them on we can't we have to take our thinking today and our knowledge today and try to apply it to what they were saying if we saw something fantastical that we've never seen before we're going to use our la our language and compare it to things we know of today that's what he did 19 I said I was going to skip some stuff, but I haven't really. <laughs> and when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. So the wheels, so when the living creatures went up, they went up, the, the wheels went up at the same time. Could they have the creatures been on top of the wheel? He doesn't say they were or weren't. Could they have been inside the wheel? Um, he doesn't say. Um, so we're left to wonder on that. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. So it, it, where one went, the other went. Now think about these lights that people see and they see a triangle formation um, if you have if you have four things on the same level on the same plane in the sky four making a square and you turn that square slightly you only see two sides and at the right angle it could be a triangle uh, just saying just came um, See, there was something else I wanted to say about that here. <clears throat> Moving on, 22. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was the color of a terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. Under the firmament were their wings straight. The one toward the other, every one had two, which covered on his side I'm going to start this, this, this verse over 23 and under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other, every one had two, which covered on this side and every one had two, which covered on that side, their bodies, <coughs> excuse me. So a wing in the front and back and a wing on each side. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great rivers, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of host. When they stood, they let their wings down. So when they went, he heard the noise of their wings, this great thundering watery water sound. It reminds me of a helicopter or of a jet, that, that kind of sound. Um, and when they stood they let down their wings. What does a helicopter do? When the, the propellers, especially the older helicopters, um, their wings would, when they stopped, their propellers would, would droop down. And they even have folding propellers. When it's a big storm, you can fold them down so that the helicopter doesn't get damaged in the wind. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man upon it. Now, I should have done um, a word study on firmament. I know what it means in different... Um, like in Genesis, it you know separated the waters, the firmament. It could mean the same thing here. It could not. It could mean something totally different. Um, it depends on the uh, Hebrew uh, or the uh, 
yeah, Hebrew or Aramaic, I think Ezekiel, Ezekiel or Daniel's Aramaic. Aramaic. Firmament could mean something different than what normally pops up into my mind anyway when I hear firmament, and that is referring to the Genesis firmament. Um, but this is as if they are holding up the firmament, which would make sense if Yahweh's throne um, is on top of the, the firmament. They're carrying him. They are the guardians. They are the strong ones. Um, the cherub are... There was a, Yahweh placed a, a cherub with a fiery sword at the gate at the Garden of Eden to keep Adam and Eve and everyone from coming back into the garden. They were they were cast out, and he, he was placed there. Um, interesting, Lucifer was a cherub. He was the uh, the cherub over the mercy seat, I think. I forget his exact title. But he was, um, he was like, a, not above God, only in a, a sense there as um, like a protection or like these things are carrying the throne of God upon some type of firmament. And um, so let's move on. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire around and as the appearance of fire round about within from the appearance of his loins, even upward and from the appearance of his loins, even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire and it had brightness about it and brightness refers to the highest level of existence which is Yahuwah Yahweh our Heavenly Father as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain so was the appearance of the brightness round about this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord and when I saw it I fell upon my face and I heard a voice of one that spake as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain so was the appearance of the brightness round about. There's other descriptions of God's throne um, in the Bible, and they also say that there's a rainbow around the colors of bright colors of a rainbow surrounding his throne. And then Ezekiel uh, chapter two, God starts talking to him and telling him what to say to the children of Israel all the way to chapter 10. And then in chapter 10 then i looked and behold the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne so again we have uh, the firmament and it's in revelation when the saints are underneath the throne and they're they're asking Yahweh uh, what are they asking him they're asking him um, I forget what they're asking him but it's like a sea of glass and they're underneath it uh, it kind of reminds me of that and he spake unto the man clothed with linen and said go in between the wheels even under the cherub and fill thine hand with the coals from the fire between the cherubs and scatter them over the city and he went in in my sight now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in and the cloud filled the inner court then the glory of the lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house and the house was filled with the cloud and the court was full of the brightness of the lord's glory and the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the utter court as the voice of the almighty god when he spaketh loud thundering again and it came to pass that when he had commanded the man, the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels, from between the cherubim, then he went in and stood beside the wheels. And one cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubims unto the fire that was between the cherubims, and took thereof, and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen, who took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings. 
And when I looked, behold, the four wheels by the cherubim, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel by another cherub, and the appearance of the wheels was as the color of beryl stone. And as for their appearances, they four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. It's like in chapter 1. When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went. But to the place whither they had looked, they followed it. They turned not as they went. And their whole body and their whole backs and their backs and their heads and their wings and the wheels, full of eyes round about, even the wheels that they four had. As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel. And every one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub, and the second face was the face of a man, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubim were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river Chibar. A little bit of a bit different description, though, right? He says here this this was the uh, he just gives an extra a different face, um, the face of a cherub. What happened to the face of the calf? That was in the other one. A lion, a man, an eagle, and an ox. This one, a lion, a man, an eagle, and a cherub. So the ox and the cherub. Interesting. I wonder if this has anything to do with Lucifer, who was a cherub. And if you notice in ancient religions, and even today, what is worship a lot? In India, they worship cows. Molech, a god with a, uh, he had a, a head of a, a cow. When they stood, and when the, I'm sorry, 16, and when the cherubims went out, the wheels went by them, and when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from beside them. When they stood, these stood, and when they were lifted up, these lifted up themselves also, for the spirit of the living creature was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off of the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubims. The cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out, the wheels also were beside them, and everyone stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house. And the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. Oh, man, I can't wait to see stuff like this. This is the living creature that I saw under the God of Israel by the river Chebar, and I knew that they were the cherubims. Everyone had four faces a piece and every one had four wings and the likeness of the hands of man of a man was under the wings and the likeness of their faces was the same faces which i saw by the river chibar their appearance and themselves they went every one straight forward so he reiterates that it's the same ones that he saw by the river chibar that he's seeing here uh, in that vision um He's seeing them again here and describing them. So if God has these entities that he's created, these cherubim that we've named them, and they're, let me see, how do I say this the best way? You see these angels and you see and you you hear the description of their vehicles and how they're moving around and you look today and we have vehicles that match the movements of these descriptions here that were with god here not with god man to me that just solidifies the idea that fallen angels who would have this technology they had it before 
They knew of it then. They were there when our Heavenly Father created everything. They fell from grace. They fell from the presence of God to come to earth to mate with women. And they're back. Or they've never left. And they're just making their presence known even more so now. And I think because the time is getting closer to the return of God and they want to deceive us. They want to be that first appearance. And he is going to say that he is God. And he's going to come down in a grand manner and with these it could be all alien ships and you know ufo type things that just blow our mind when we see them he could duplicate exactly how it says in this book and they he they could be a, a creature with a you know the four faces ox eagle a lion and a man and have literal wings just to say, look, it says right here, this is how I came last time. Here I am again. And don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Um, thank you, Father, for this. And continue to watch over us. Continue to open our eyes, Lord. Continue to give us understanding of your word. Take the veil from off our eyes and let us see what you intend. Give us understanding, wisdom, knowledge. Give us more of your love. I wasn't able to cut in the pictures like I said in the beginning of the video. I've got some pictures, some still shots, and these are these first ones are of a craft flying through the sky. It f um, flings something out from itself. But what I want you to notice is what's in the background in the clouds. You're gonna see a lot of faces in these clouds. I'm gonna highlight them and I'll go back and forth on some of these highlighted and unhighlighted. And they're demonic faces. And I think this, that's why I think that's why I said what I said in the beginning about uh, or in the in the main video about these demonic forces and UFOs, fallen angels flying them, and uh, they are checking out their handiwork. And if you look close, you'll see them. Some of them you don't even have to look close. And there's a lot that I a lot of faces in there that I didn't highlight. So, Mr. M B. B333 is the channel on YouTube that showcased this. He didn't say anything about the faces in the clouds. That's something I noticed. So uh, coming up on it here. Sorry about the black screen. Uh, about another 10 seconds, I think. And I'll start uh, narrating these pictures. And here we go. This first one is of a faraway shot of the craft. The second one is a highlighted uh, closer one. This next one is, you're going to see a face here to the left of the, there you go, see the highlights there, I highlighted underneath it, he's leaning over, he's got horns, he's like, got his hands up to his mouth as if like, shh, and uh, this next one is a single face, you'll see it a little bit better here, and here is a series of faces on top of this cloud. Up and to the left, you'll see I'll highlight this face. This is a, a, a man. And then on the left is a one leaning in. You can see the big eyes there and the horns. Um, another face up here in the clouds. And go, you're going to have to go back. I know it went fast. Um, these next images are, uh, here is... A possibility of what the four the living creatures looked like with the four faces and their uh, feet of bronze 
this is how the Bible and how many people think they will look like. They could very well have been spaceships like this. Here's the eyes around them. Um, these, those look like feet, all right? They look like bronze feet. Straight, like a calf. It's a, holding up a spaceship. Here we're gonna have some wheels with holes in them that look like eyes. One interpretation. Um, personally, I think they were, the eyes were, uh, were windows in, in the craft. Uh, here's an old picture, an old drawing, an artist rendition of what what he thought it looked like. I don't know what year this is from, 1600s, I believe. Um, an arm, uh, could have been a robotic arm coming off a ship like this. These are the beast, these are the four living creatures holding it up. This could be four living creatures. Love you guys.